Well, I guess that should do it. <laughs> Here you go. It's about time. The O2 mask. All right, so we finally, finally get the O2 mask after all that trial and error. So obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory what the O2 mask does, but it allows us to go into three new types of environment right now. First of all, it allows us to breathe indefinitely underwater, so that nasty uh, counter that shows up at the side of the screen there, which you can still kind of see out of the frame there because the uh, aspect ratio is slightly different on the HD collection, so you can see that stuff off the frame there. Um, so now we can, we don't have to worry about a time limit when breathing underwater, which is really nice. Um, secondly, it allows us to, to other different environments, the vacuum of space, so if we ever have to go outside in a um, zero oxygen, zero gravity environment, then we'll be able to breathe out there too. And thirdly, most importantly for the progression of the game at this point, it allows us to walk around as Ratchet on Orkson, where we previously could only explore as Clank because the planet is so horribly polluted and toxic, thanks to the Blarg. Oh, if I didn't show up before, there's a move you can do with the uh, thruster pack there. If you double tap um, R1, you can uh, hover like that. And it also allows you to hold the lower shoulder buttons, um, R2 and L2, and you can uh, strafe side to side when you have those held down, which is really, really nice for combat situations. And we can also do some funny tricks with it, too. There's a lot of tricks you can do with the thruster pack, and I'll be showing those off soon enough. So, um, this level is pretty hard. <laughs> I mean, this was always a, it's a big planet, too. I mean, surprised they were able to ruin this entire thing. Okay, so as you can see, it's the same environment we had as Clank, although it actually looks proportioned now. This looks a lot smaller than it did when we were Clank, because Clank is a lot smaller, obviously. So, now we get to see everything for its accurate scale. Nothing new available right now. I, don't, there's, I think there's only a couple weapons not available for the rest of the game. I think we pretty much have everything else unlocked. So we need to be going down there. There's two different branching paths we're going to be going on here. One is an optional objective, the other one is the info bot that's going to take us to the next planet. So we have to do things in order in order to get the O2 mask to come back here as Ratchet. It's critical. These guys right here, I, I can't exactly remember what they're called, uh, but they're asleep during the section as Ratchet. I know I'm, I'm pretty sure I said what they were called during the Clank section. Um, the mining glove is a good way to deal with them because you can set up the mines before they awaken. You can trigger them with a taunter. Um, but keep in mind, they come at you pretty fast and they're pretty dangerous. They also counterattack when you hit them at close range. So try not to use your wrench against them unless you're doing a, a comet strike. Because it's not going to end well. Those flying enemies there are one-hit enemies. They're called darters. And these guys are called screamers. When they when they w awaken at a closer or a, more, a farther proximity than the, the big guys do... Um, these guys are really tough, They're like a five or six hit enemy, so the Mind Glove is a good way to deal with them. Uh, just, I kind of don't recommend using the mines too close to each other because they will uh, probably not take the damage on their invulnerable frames while they're reacting, and uh, the damage from the second mine will be in vain if you don't wait a few seconds. So they're probably a five hit enemy. Sometimes I'm able to get them with uh, the mine and then two wrench hits because it's three damage from the mine and two from the wrench. Something like that. Problem with setting up multiple mines is oh, yeah, these force fields here can be deactivated by destroying the little nodes there. Problem with um, throwing down multiple mines is you don't know which one, which enemy they're going to target. So here's the two branching paths here. We're going to go to the right first here um, and collect the info bot. We can see him over there. We're going to be getting the optional thing probably in the next video. There we go. We managed to do a single hit of damage there and lure him into the mine. Finish him off with one shot there. So we definitely want to take out the blaster and kill these two guys here. You may have noticed an edit back there because I died. And this does happen over here quite a bit. This is the place where you're going to die going either path and it takes you back to this checkpoint regardless. So yeah, it's definitely committed you at this point. Thankfully, the loud explosion from the mine glove does not wake these guys up. But a small creature screaming does, apparently. And obviously the taunter does too. Alright, these guys I can probably just ignore uh, now that I've destroyed the screamer that's allocated to their encounter. And uh, take the magnum boots up here. I want to show off this little trick right here. You can actually use the, uh, the hover feature there to go up uh, magnum boot rail. But it's very unstable. You tend to slide off a lot of times, but for some reason the magnum boots still work 
even though you're hovering over them. And it's it's kind of a nice uh, movement tech if you wanted to just kind of experiment around with it, but not really worth it. It's very difficult to maintain your balance on it, so. These darters over here are... Uh, I can't really hit them with a Comet Strike because of the way the Magnum Boots are working, but I'll get in range with them. It's kind of hard to tell their flight path here, but they're coming after us now, so... We can't pull out a weapon like a blaster and use that against them right here because we can only have our wrench. Because our wrench is already magnetized to us, we can ho still hold it because it comes back to us, but our other weapons would be magnetized to the rail, so we can't do that. There's also, I've done it before, I've jumped off of there and landed on this platform here and then just swing shot my way over to the other side. But it's very tricky to do. I've also um, broken off from the magnet boot path there and used the swing shot in mid-air to get over here, which is a lot harder than it sounds. If you went to the bottom there, you could have used the taunter to lure these guys into the force field and killed them, which could have gotten you the bolts from destroying them. But it just costs a little bit of extra time, so I'm just going to be moving on here. I have enough bolts to finish the game with, of course. You jerk! There's not another weapon I want to buy for quite some time, so we should be fine on bolts. There's also not that many upper, not that many uh, opportunities that require us to spend bolts to extend the plot either at this point in the game. Huh. At least that second mine didn't explode there when it hit that enemy. Yeah, I used to have a hard time with these guys back the first time I played the game. Now I know how to avoid them, but they're still pretty tough, I do have to say. This planet can be pretty unforgiving. We haven't even met the most dangerous enemy yet. Yeah, fighting an enemy that hard counters your wrench is definitely going to throw some people off the first time they fight it because their instincts are, oh, it's up close, I can just melee it to death. Well, not so with these guys. It definitely um, counters your basic instinct as far as how to fight the enemies go. Unless you're used to some more traditional action games that tend to have these types of enemies, but in a platformer like this, it's kind of unexpected. So there is a Screamer over there in the corner. I want to see if I can get rid of him before we get too carried away here. Okay. That at least prevents the other um, claw enemies behind these guys from waking up before we get too close. There looks like a giant mouth there on the side. Okay, I'm probably going to have to deal with these guys before we exit. Whoops, that did not... That was unintentional. I want to deal with these guys before we wake up the guys on the other side there because we can lure them with the taunter and kill them that way. If you really wanted to, if you had the bolts to spare and the ammo for it, you could use the Devastator on these guys too, because they're tough enough to warrant it, but, you know, it's just you're fighting so many of them, it might be kind of inefficient. But if you wanted to just, like, speed run through this area and clean out all of them, then you could easily do that. But another caveat of these enemies is the fact that you can just ignore them altogether, which is really nice. So, I'm going to show off how the Taunter is still useful at this point in the game. One of the most worthwhile investments here. We actually get a skill point for doing this. And if I haven't gone over the skill points, I'm sure I have, but in case I haven't talked about the skill points yet, they're basically a in-game version of trophies. Before trophies were even a thing. Every Insomniac game has them. The entire Spyro trilogy has them. The entire Action Clank series has them. The Resistance series has them. I don't know if um, Fuse has them or not. I don't think it does. But, um, you know, it's basically an in-game, you know, do this oddly specific thing in this oddly specific way and get a little in-game um, reward that will all accumulate towards some greater bonuses later on. And um, it usually just unlocks cheat codes and that kind of thing, which are pretty superfluous in this first game, but it can definitely unlock some cool stuff in the later games in the series, and I'll go over that when it's relevant. But, yeah, this game had trophies before trophies were trophies. So let me demonstrate the Devastator right here on these guys. I'm actually trying to hit the dropship over there, which is the toughest enemy in the level. It's a uh, Blarg uh, Starfighter, much of the same ones we fought on Poketaru, and it's firing missiles at us. This thing is dead serious, and this is actually a pretty dangerous fight here. 
because these things have a lot of splash damage and it takes like three hits with a Devastator to kill it. It's pretty tough. I think it's a lot of health. <clears throat> right, these two guys somehow avoided our encounter earlier, which is fine. I think if they wake up, they will not go back to sleep, though. There's the info bot, so I think we've made it to the end of the line here. Obviously, we'll go back to where we were before and uh, take the other path as well. And it doesn't even take us that long out of our way. Just take the Magnum Boots up, and there's the info bot. Hello again, everyone. Supreme Executive Chairman Drek here to fill you in on our progress. We have now found the perfect orbit for our planet, one which will allow for the optimum temperature all year round. However, there is a planet now occupying that orbit, and sadly, for its few insignificant inhabitants, it must be destroyed. And that's why we've created this! The Planet Buster Maximus, a device capable of blowing an entire planet into subatomic particles. We're quite proud of it. Here's how it works. We attach the Planet Buster to this ship, fly it into orbit around the planet, and let it go! Kaboom! <laughs> Quite ingenious, really. Once our trained professionals put the finishing touches on our new planet, everything will be complete. Thank you! Goodbye. Now this guy's gonna blow up an entire planet? That's just... me! That's what I've been telling you. Look, I'm still gunning for Quark. If we end up taking out Drek, too, hey, <laughs> fine. What? You do care. Don't push it, pal. <laughs>